Beautiful people, welcome back to another episode of Who Can Relate. If you are new here, this one's for you. My name is Justin Davis, aka JD, and this show is about people discovering their higher selves through adversity, vulnerability, with a big underline under that word, and self-love. Now, first things first, before I go any further, I owe you all an apology. For the loyal, faithful, and beautiful community that is Who Can Relate, My sincere apologies for the gap and for the delay in episodes. Let me explain why. Not to make any excuses, but I just want to be fully transparent with you all. To run this show as a solo band is extremely, extremely challenging. Week in and week out, I feel like it's getting harder and harder. I was talking to Shay the other day and I, I think I realized that In hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done 50 episodes my first season. (laughs) I probably should have done 25 per. And right now, we'd actually be on season three. But here we are, lesson learned and noted. But uh, yeah, I just, you know, felt like I owed the community an apology. Uh, You know, you guys are so loyal and so faithful to the show and to the mission. And uh, I just didn't want to have that go without being addressed. So my apologies. We have a beautiful episode today. We have another one next week and hopefully it can build some momentum here. As we gear up towards the end of season two, you know, I really want to go out with a bang. So let's get into it. As you know, by tradition now, we have a quote and some intentions to start the day. And because of the delay and the gap in these episodes, I want to give you guys a pretty thorough, extensive quote for the day and really give you something to think about. Okay, here it goes. Doubt is resistance. Faith is surrender. Worry is resistance. Joy is surrender. Control is resistance. Allowing is surrender. And ridicule is resistance. But believing is surrender. I really wonder how each and every one of you received that quote and what stands out to you. What stands out to me? is the control part and how control is the resistant in my life but allowing is actually me surrendering and if you watch the ayahuasca episode that I did or hell any episode after that you know because that was my come to Jesus moment I really realized how much I need or feel the need to be in control in my life and how I have trust issues and Oh, it's really hard for me to surrender. So again, control being the resistance and allowing being the surrender really stood out to me in this this beautiful quote. So uh, yeah, let me know in the comments or the review section what that quote meant to you and what stood out. Uh, today's intention for the episode is to really have a moment in the spotlight moment for the word vulnerability and you know for me it's 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 heavily about men being more vulnerable and trying to normalize that but it's just anybody you know in any walk of life any age any demographic you know, I, I really can't stress enough how much being more vulnerable in my relationships has elevated my relationships especially the ones closest to me so i have a beautiful guest that i chose for this one and uh, i think you guys are really gonna like him especially the way he looks and the way he sounds. So if you're listening, you're still going to get a little treat because there's some ear candy coming your way with a beautiful British accent. Uh, Without further ado, let me welcome Lee. Lee, as I mentioned, who's in London, he is a very popular face on the British TV screen. He's one of the hosts of a hugely successful show called A Place in the Sun, which is people traveling around the world to help house hunters find their dream home abroad. Now, Lee himself has been buying and selling properties for over a decade. And let me just tell you, his interior design skills, if this TV presenter thing didn't work out, he could 100% go into interior design because his spaces are absolutely beautiful. Now, Lee also wears a couple different hats. He's a model. He's a business owner with a beautiful fashion brand. And he also is a passionate activist. He campaigns for racial equality and has raised money for Black Lives Matter and Grenfell Relief Charities in the past. Lee, like myself, is a jack of all trades, a beautiful human being inside and out. So without further ado, please enjoy this wonderful episode between Lee and I, uh, something near and dear to my heart. Again, normalizing vulnerability for people, but especially men. 
And I really feel like we did that here. So I'm going to say welcome back for myself. (laughs) And again, to the community, thank you so much for being patient, for accepting the nuances and and craziness of this whole podcast game for me and and trying to blend it into the rest of the stuff in my life. Um, I just appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you all are doing so well. And yeah, enjoy the episode. Anyways, um, Lee, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me. I'm so um, so honored we get to do this uh, in person. I know. We had a uh, an IG live back in... Um, Dude, that was three years ago. Three or two? It was during the pandemic. So it was 20... I think it was around like... 2019. The, um, George Floyd stuff. It was. So, so it 2020. Was. 2020. Oh, it was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, 2020. So two, yeah, two, two years, ago. years ago. Holy shit. Anyways, um, wow. And we've been saying we do this. So crazy. I know. And like, I had so many moments where I was just going to do it via Zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's virtual because you're in London, but um, I'm glad we waited. No, I'm glad we waited. It's just nice to be here. And obviously two years in. I know. I feel very honored to be here. It's wild. Uh, I'm honored to have you here. And um, when I found out you're going to be in town, it Mm -hmm. was like, selfishly, I'm like, I want to see you. I want to make sure you're good, (laughs) but I want you to come on the show. And um, you kind of provided the outline uh, for today, which is rare, which is great. Okay. Um, yeah, usually I'm always like, what do you want to talk about? I'm like, yeah. here you go. Um, but it was perfect because I had a lot going on this week. And so you kind of took that off my plate, which was cool. Um, and we're going to touch on a lot of different things today. One of them is um, mental health, which I know is an overall umbrella, but um, mainly why and, and how men struggle, whether it's yeah. with vulnerability, whether it's with success. Um, relationships, friendships, career, et cetera. Um, we're going to be talking about, as I got my outline, we're going to go over, um, as I said, like, what does it look like on a day-to-day basis, you know, for you? We talked about anxiety and, and yeah. possibly depression, and yeah. I can definitely relate to both of those things and um, so on and so forth. But I think just to kick everything off, um, as I wrote down this question, the struggles for men really stood out to me. Right, because it's so it's so broad, it's so general. Yeah. What made you give that as far as like something you wanted to talk about? Like, wh- like what does that mean when you say like struggles for men, struggles for you? I can only kind of speak from like a personal, yeah, kind of, you know, position really. But I think looking at my peers and you know, I grew up in London mm-hmm. and seeing us all, we're all at different stages of our lives. Some people have kids, some people are married, some people. Are some people are just doing the most but sure. <laughs> i think it's one of those things where each and every friend of mine that's a guy we've all struggled in our own right and it's been some speak about it more than others some don't even talk about yeah. it at all right and then some are just like in need of help but i think me now being i'm 35 years old so we're the same age yeah but if you were to ask me five years ago even three years ago, mm-hmm. we'd be like, yeah, I'm great doing cartwheels everywhere and stuff like that. But I think internally, there's been such a struggle um, mentally, you mm-hmm. know, and emotionally as well. And I think every man, I hate to say it, you know, if you don't go for it, then I applaud you because it's amazing. Because mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't want my worst enemy to go through certain things that we've been through. But yeah. I think there is that old stigma where they say men don't cry or men shouldn't talk about their feelings and stuff like that and you know like you said the term mental health is an umbrella Mm -hmm. and there's so many different aspects to it but I feel like it's one of the topics that has become more spoken about Mm -hmm. but it's like what we actually talking about it's like everyone says mental health mental health mental health but it's not really addressing the needs of certain people man or woman sure so I feel one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about it personally was I think it's very easy as a human to judge others. Mm -hmm. We, we do it. It's human nature. We see someone smiley, happy on TV or a film and we always expect them to be like that in real life. Mm -hmm. And I think just because you have this outside persona, the inside doesn't always match. Sure. And that's where I feel like people need to really understand that, Behind closed doors, there's a lot going on. Yeah. And some people, 
are introverts and they don't really talk about it. Mm -hmm. Some people talk about it. Yeah. Um, and I think... Wait, which one are you? <sighs> Does it depend on, it, <laughs> on the know, person or the day or... Yeah. It, it really depends. Yeah. It really, really depends. And that's where I think, you know, I struggle at times because... We all do. You know, I... My job is I'm paid to, to, to be on TV. I'm paid to talk. So with that comes a certain level of expectation. And when I'm on filming, when I'm on screen and when I'm on TV, mm -hmm. there is Lee. The presenter. The, the presenter. Yeah, yeah. And that guy is happy, clappy, mm. dressed well. Yeah. You know, his energy's up and he's, he's great. And yeah. that is me at times but it's also not me at the same time. Sure. Because like everyone else, when I wake up in the morning, the last thing I want to do is, you know, be all chatty and, yeah, and stuff yeah. like Just that. Just on, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's, that's the thing, and that's the word. It's like, you always have to be on. Mm -hmm. I feel like at work, and when I'm doing what I'm doing, same thing with you yeah. and modeling and stuff like that. People yeah. have a certain expectation of you. Mm -hmm. So whatever you're going through, as soon as you're in front of that camera, you got Doesn't to turn matter. it on, yeah. you know? And, and we all do that professionally, whether you work in an office, whether you're a lawyer, an attorney, whatever you are, sure. you've got to be on and you've got to forget what's going on in your personal life yeah, and totally. get on with it. But then I think when you remove yourself from that situation, then I become a different person. Mm. So that's where the introvert in me comes along. Okay. So when it comes to how you can identify that, right? And then from there, like, okay, I'm having a shitty day or a shitty moment. Yeah. How do you accept it? Or do you try to fight it, right? Because for yeah. me, when, when I have these moments of I'm just having a day, mm -hmm. I used to try to fight that feeling. Mm -hmm. Like, no, you're not. It's fine. Come on, glass half full, optimism times 10. Let's go. And I'm like, oh, okay. You know, and I'm like dragging myself through whatever. And I'm like, but no, I'm, I'm still upset about this. I'm still sad about yeah. this. I'm still like frustrated. I can't put my finger on this, whatever that this is. And then I learned, like, instead of fighting this feeling, like, feel the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Feel the feeling through, through its entirety yeah. as, as much as you can, right? Because what, what can happen is, and what often happens, at least for me, is I bottle in that feeling. Mm. And I turn that switch on. But then it comes out in another form. Right. Whether it's with my wife, yeah. it's with my mom, it's with my friend, it's with my daughter, it's with what, it's a stranger. I'm, I have road rage on the street. I'm driving, right? It just comes out. And I'm like, oh, I don't even know what just happened? Well, I've been bottling in so much and now all of a sudden, because I didn't feel my feelings through, yeah. I put them under this rug, here we are. So back to the question is, how do you identify it? And then what happens? Do you accept it? Do you try to fight it? Do you feel it out? Like what, what happens? I'll be honest, I think it, dis it really is dependent on what the situation of course, is. Yeah. And I think the majority of, of the course. time, I'll be honest, I have been in therapy. I've been in therapy really for the last three or four years on and off. Good I feel you. it's essential. Personally, it works for me. It's an outlet that I have every week or every other week where mm. because of my job, I travel so much and I'm never in one place at the same time. Yeah. So it could be done virtually. And I think I personally think it's the best investment that I've ever made in myself in terms of financially, but also emotionally as well. Yeah. And it's it's given me a way of coping. Mm. So when I'm having those days, you know, I think a, a lot of people would struggle to understand this about me, but I genuinely say 60 or 70% of the time, I am riddled with anxiety. Wow. Riddled. And it it's something that I wake up, I'm anxious and blah, blah, blah. And I, f I have mm. ways of, of dealing with it. So I'm not the type of person that... You know, it does happen, believe me, where, you know, I'm anxious and I'm like, I cannot do anything. I can't mm. bear to see people. But I have learned coping mechanisms from therapy right. and from just working on myself. So that is a workout, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. People, you know, I, I work out quite a lot. I'd probably work out five or six times a week. Mm -hmm. And that is not for me to be an Adonis because it's never going to happen, <laughs> right, right. right? But it's for me to feel like no matter I could travel for mm -hmm. 14 hours I could film for 12 hours and I could be working for 16 hours but I'll always find a way to do some sort of exercise whether that's a walk weights running or something like that sure. for at least 40 minutes because it clears this yeah. and yeah. it's just almost like a reset button yeah it's that chance for me to like switch off from anything else that's going on out there mm -hmm. and just have a bit of kind of I suppose me time yeah how long did it take you to get that tool in your toolbox? 
years. Yeah. Yes, I always I always say to myself like I'm a I'm a bit of a late developer. Okay, I'm I'm a massively late developer. I can relate to that. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I'm, I'm a huge late developer <laughs> in terms of I discovered fitness. I discovered, I suppose, mental well being much later on in life. Mm. Um, kind of, I think when I hit thirty, there's a certain level of expectation that society has on thirty year olds. Yeah. And some of it is, you know, you put it on yourself mm -hmm. because you think, I should be doing this. I should be here. I should be there. But also you look at externally other people that are 30 that put, that potentially have more than what we do. Sure. But then again, you're asking that question, well, what is more? What I was, was going to ask that. Yeah. 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 What do they head. have <laughs> that we don't? Yeah. But for me, when I was 30 was a year that I really just, I would say shit hit the fan mm. in terms of really figuring out who I was, yeah. what the hell I wanted to do in my life and what yeah. direction I wanted to go into. By the way, none of those questions I have the answer to just yet. Oh, no, 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 <laughs> it's, it's totally fine. I, I, I relate to exactly what you're saying because I, for one, um, am a huge, I guess, advocate, for lack of a better word, on there's a click for people, but especially men at 30. And mm. I, like, I don't even know what it is necessarily, but there is something that clicks and it's like, for me, it was a hard look in the mirror. Like, what are we really doing, yeah. though? <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, I don't have X, Y, Z that another fellow 30-year-old would have. Um, and that's the comparison route. Or I don't have a successful relationship, like, mm -hmm. that I would want and I feel like I deserve. So yeah. what's that about? Right? And yeah. I'm going down this list. And it's just this, like, inventory check with yourself. And for yeah. some reason, it's at 30 where we just wake up and we're like, I'm not in my 20s anymore. Like, yeah. I, don't, I can't use that excuse. Oh, I'm young. I'm yeah. figuring it out. It's yeah. like... I'm 30. Yeah. Not that I have to have it all figured out, but I have to have a better game plan than what the hell this is right now. Yeah. So I totally understand. And that's why I asked, like, how did you find out that exercising was a tool for you? Because a lot of people feel these feelings, mm. right? But it's like, what are, not the coping mechanisms, but what are the tools to help me get through this? Yeah. Or at least just make it more manageable. And so for you, you found exercise, like, which is beautiful. Yeah, I did. And I think it's subjective. It's really down to, to the individual. But I mean, yeah. my personal story, and I can only speak for myself, yeah. is is I struggled a lot growing up mm. to really fit in anywhere. I never felt like I fit in, whether that was at school, whether, you know, that was at, you know, you guys call it college, university, whatever. Mm. Um, I, I, I never had a friendship group that I fit in where I was 100% organically myself yeah. because I always felt like I had to be like everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like the way that I looked. I grew up the fat kid. I grew up the fat, ugly kid. Mm -hmm. And that was, and, and that's the truth. And everyone is like, no, you didn't, blah, blah, blah. But and then you look back and you're like, wow, what the hell happened? <laughs> it's, it's one of those things yeah, where yeah. I really felt different when I was younger. And obviously being a person of color yeah. in a predominantly white environment, same. Every single person that I went to school with was Caucasian. Same. And I didn't know where I fit in. And so kind of, I'd say in my l kind of mid twenties to, to late twenties, I didn't like the way that I looked physically. And I always thought, okay, I need to change that. I wanted to be healthy. I wanted to be happy. I wanted to have an education about lifestyle and health. And so it was self-taught and I hated the gym. I hated working out. So funny. Yeah. Go figure, right? Like the irony. It, it, it was just the most, you told me to go to the gym and I had no idea. I'd go running at the gym for half an hour. Then I'd yeah. go home and pick out. Yeah. yeah like, yeah, you know, sure. I just didn't know what was, I was consuming. I, I didn't have a love of food. And then it was the kind of, I suppose the light bulb moment came when I was about 30 years old and, and I was working out and I kind of just enjoyed it because mm. I wasn't aspiring to be ripped or anything like that. Of course, we'd love to have that physique 24-7, right. but it's unattainable at the same time yeah. because you've got to eat completely clean. Like a machine. You know, yeah. you've got to yeah. eat, you've got to sleep, you've got to do the whole right yeah. thing. And, you know, my lifestyle is a clean lifestyle, mm. but also I like to treat myself at the same time. And yeah. I just, I, I realized I wasn't doing it working out mm -hmm. to you know, have this amazing body, which, you know, obviously I want to stay fit. I want to stay healthy. Sure. I want to look good because that's the work that I do. Sure. But I realized it was helping me up here. Yeah. It was helping my mind. More importantly. It was, it was helping me switch yeah. off. 
Yeah. So that was one of the coping mechanisms. Mm. And then I wanted to learn about kind of meditation and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and it's one of those things where I encourage people to meditate, but I'm not necessarily yeah. doing it every single yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's really about finding ways that work for you, mm -hmm. for example. Some people yeah. like just going for a walk. Sure. You know. Yeah, everyone's different and that's okay. It's just a matter of, like you said, finding out what it is for you and then also kind of trying to be consistent, mm -hmm. you know, with it and giving it a chance, mm -hmm. right? It's not just like, okay, Lee said to go exercise. Let me try that. And I do it yeah. once and it's like, what the hell is he talking about? Yeah, no, yeah. no, stick to it. Like yeah, just keep, sure. keep trying new things and stay consistent. Um, we had a beautiful conversation on the way over here in the car. And yeah. one of the things you said was, which I relate to for sure, and I know a lot of people can, was it's hard for you to accept compliments, or yeah. it's hard for you to see yourself in the light that everyone else does. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about that and, and maybe like either where it stems from or yeah. if you can remember like how it started. It's something that I'm really trying to work on. Yeah. But I've always struggled with, with kind of ever receiving any kind of compliment because not to for people to feel sorry for me or anything like that, mm -hmm. but I was never good enough at anything when I was younger. Gotcha. Yeah. So I wasn't academic. Yeah. You know, I wasn't, I didn't apply myself at school. I wasn't good at sport. I mm -hmm. wasn't really artistic. And I was kind of like, what the hell am I good at? And I still struggled. And I kind of knew that one thing about me, I was always, I'd say, you know, I, I understood who I was as a person. I, I always felt different. Mm -hmm. And that goes back as far as I can remember from like when I was at nursery, like preschool. Yeah. Um, and it's just something that I carried on. I suppose the older you get, you kind of think, oh yeah, things are gonna get so much easier. Yeah. And they don't no. because you <laughs> develop new kind of things where you get, you know, this whole thing about being anxious and, and not being present. And then this fat thing called imposter syndrome, which is where, I really, really struggle with. And I still feel like I'm I'm not good enough at a lot of things. So I know I'm working. Mm -hmm. I know I'm doing everything that I can potentially do. I always, I'm always, I'm a, I'm a guy that's, I'm a go-getter. So I'll go out there and make it happen. Yeah. Everything that I'm doing, I've kind of made happen mm -hmm. myself. But with that comes a lot of responsibility. With that comes an extreme amount of fear. And I always feel, I don't know why, that I'm never good enough to be doing certain things. And even though mm. I know to get where I am, I've worked extremely hard to get there. There's always something in the back of my mind, which is like, you're not good enough for certain friendships, certain relationships, to be around certain groups and mm. blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I have done a lot of work to try and kind of shift the stigma and to shift the hurt. But I mean, it's almost like I'm programmed when something when I'm rejected yeah. in any capacity, whether it's work, whether it's personal life or anything like that, I'm programmed to go into this self-destruct mode. Mm. And I can really beat myself up about yeah. anything, you know. I just wanted to chime in here for a second and, and take a quick little intermission. When I was editing this episode, I realized how much I can relate to Lee. And especially when it comes to self-destructing and being really hard on myself. I know for one, as I said oftentimes in here before, I am by far my worst critic. And as much as I can relate to Lee and what he's talking about here, I also just was curious from the audience's standpoint to if, if you can relate to this. For me personally, what I really struggle with is when things are going my way, I worry about them being taken away from me or the person taken away from me. Now I can identify and, and through a lot of work I know that a lot of it is stemming from my childhood of, of, of abandonment issues. I'm constantly looking for the what's the catch moment. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to prepare and trying to control as much as I can into when this person could possibly leave, how they're going to leave. OK, they've now left. Where am I? How do I handle this? How do I get back on my feet? How do I move on, etc. And what really sucks about that is it, it takes me out of out of the present moment. It takes me away from being happy and, and I guess feeling worthy and deserving of receiving whatever it is that I have. Instead, I just go down this rabbit hole of like, this is not going to last forever. So let's just cut to the chase 
and get get it over with kind of thing. So again, I, I just was curious from the audience standpoint, if you're watching on YouTube, please leave a comment. If you're listening on uh, Apple Podcasts, please leave a review. I just wanted to know where you guys stood with that. Can you relate to me more or can you relate to Lee more or is it both? So I go into that a little bit here and a couple more things. So here we go. Back to the episode. And what's funny for me is on the flip side, when things are going really good, I have that same feeling because it's like it's too good to be true. Yeah. Like I'm always looking at the end road or the yep. like the stop sign or like do not pass this anymore or something's going to be taken away from me or this person's going to leave me or whatever. And it's like even when things are good, let alone when they're bad. And I've gotten a lot better now through as, as I get older and through therapy 100 um, percent. And even then just journaling and being vulnerable with myself at first to be honest with myself because there's a long time I was in denial <laughs> like about my problems and then I was like you know what it's that's not serving me lying to myself is is I'm, I'm doing the most damage by doing that because if I can't even see this and, and I'm the only person that can change all of this I'm really in trouble so being honest and vulnerable with myself and just realizing like okay the fear that I have in something good being taken away from me or something bad that happened to me is probably 99% just a hypothetical. It's more than likely 99% not even going to happen. Right, right, right. And so why am I spending 99% of my energy and my effort and my thought in this department of this worry? Yeah. And the other part of it is like, if you don't feel like you deserve the good, if you don't feel like you deserve the career that you have as a TV presenter, Who's going to believe in you like that, right? They can believe in you now, but it's like really to where you could be and where you should be, more importantly. Mm. Who's going to believe in it if you don't? So in thinking about all this, I'm like, fuck, like that's so spot on. But how do I get to that mindset, right? Because it's easier said than done. And and it really took and still is taking because I do have imposter syndrome at times, self-sabotaging still at times. But it is taking a constant effort into telling myself, Whatever is happening to you, another affirmation is we talked about off camera. Another affirmation of mine is whatever that is happening to you, good or bad, it is for a reason. And if it's bad, let's try to find the lesson. And if it's good, let's celebrate the good because we deserve it. Instead of questioning why or when it's going to be gone or how long is it going to last, et cetera, just embrace it for what it is. You said earlier as we were walking in, like nothing for you in your career has been given to you. It's been earned. Mm. There's a lot of people, as we talked about on the flip side, who have been just given opportunity after opportunity. And when you can earn something, it feels different. Yes. It represents a different level of success and a different level of pride and appreciation and and worthiness. Yeah. Right. So we can't lose that in times of like when we're either having, again, a bad day or in my case, when something really good is happening. It's like, let's be present here and let's appreciate what we actually have that we earned. Yeah. Right. As opposed to given. The other thing that is just really impressive is the fact that you got turned down the way that you did, right? I mean, they didn't know what you were doing on the back end, like to get yourself in the position of even having the green screen test and like the pilot test. But the fact that you did all that you did, you got turned down, you had your moment, rightfully so. And you're like, I'm going to get right back up and I'm going to try this again. How many people actually do that though? Yeah. And that's the sad thing. I think I wish that's the one thing I, from people listening to this, watching this, yeah. or anything in life, whether it's job related, whether it's relationship related, or whether it's just life yeah. related, we are constantly going to be let down. Mm-hmm. And I personally really struggle with being let down. And I know no one likes it at all, but I really, I'm a very sensitive soul. Yeah. Um, and I'm a Libra, so I take everything. I was just gonna say it's the Libra in you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, I take everything personally, yeah, and yeah. I really, you know, I go down that road, and and I I criticize myself, and I self sabotage myself, and I identify myself as the problem. I'm the reason why all this has gone wrong, and mm. I blame myself. And the one thing now being present and kind of speaking about it is knowing that. This isn't your issue. Shit just happens. Right. And shit is going to continuously happen. Yeah. And it's not about it's not about kind of beating yourself up and never moving forward. Because I always think, have your moment. Feel what you're trying to feel. Because yeah. 
It's very easy, and that's the whole thing about men. Men, men, mm. and you know, we've always been told, oh, do you know what? Don't don't beat yourself up about it. Or like, get on, move on, mm. get on with it. Mm. Just get on with things. Yeah. And I think don't that's, feel it out. Yeah. yeah, that's where we've gone wrong because we're telling people that it's not okay to cry. It's not okay to talk about how you're feeling. And yeah. then ten years down the line, we just combust. Right. Yeah. You know, and so I think it really is important from a young age, you know, if, if I'm not a parent, but I mean, you're, you're a dad and, and if, if your, your child is going through something, well, rather than saying, you know, it's fine, get on yeah, with it. You yeah. have to identify what that person is going through. And even if yeah. it's just hearing them out or, or, or mm-hmm. feeling it out, then do that. But mm-hmm. always know that you can overcome certain things. Yeah. Um, yeah. It may be difficult and it will take a little while. Mm-hmm. But you'll get there. Yeah. I just saw something recently that said, um, you know, we all have this idea that, like to your point earlier about, you know, when I turn 30, I want to be in the best shape of my life and and I'm going to be happy and I'm going to be all these things, right? And then only to not even take off your shirt, you know, on (laughs) holiday, right? Or to not even be that proud to show it off and not a cocky way, but just like a, I earned this and this was really hard way. And what I was, um, I watched it, and it was a, like a um, a speech a, a basketball coach was giving to her team. And, you know, she was saying, like, life is going to be hard. Like, we all know that. So we have to stop thinking, like, once I get this body, everything's going to make sense and be easier. I'm going to be happier. Once I get this house, everything's going to be easier. I'm going to be happier. Once I get this partner, everything's going to be easier and be happier. And what we have to do is instead of, like, waiting for that moment of happiness and, and pure bliss... And knowing that life's going to be hard, we just have to handle hard better. Yeah. We can't escape the hard. The hard's going to come. Like you said, life is going to come at you no matter what. I don't care how much you're prepared, how much you're you're doing your research and you're doing what's in your control. Life's going to come at you. So instead of waiting for things to get easier, mm. we just have to handle hard better. Yeah. And when I thought about that, I was like, holy shit. Like I've ne- It sounds so simple, but I've never heard someone break it down like that. But I then, for one, went into... God, I, I do have this like idea that once Shay and I are homeowners and we have our house and we have a, now a space for kids and all this, like things will get easier. And it's mm-hmm. like, no, <laughs> they're not necessarily just going to magically appear and yeah. all the problems are going to go away. We just have to handle hard better. And so in thinking about how do I handle hard better or how can I start rather to handle hard better, um, a lot of it for me is accepting. And I love that you accepted the fact that you were rejected technically from that show only to sharpen your craft up even more, only to figure out other areas and avenues, coming to LA, getting a coach, like the fight in you is, is really admirable. And I think a lot of people can be inspired. I'm sure they will be inspired by that. And hopefully, like you said, just get to the point of like, you're going to get knocked down, but what's, what's it going to be to get you back up and how, right. And how, how to make it different. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on today too, is, um, support systems. Mm. One, how important is the support system to you? And then two, with that support system, how did you help navigate them through how to help you in time of need, right? Yeah. Because it's really hard to, one, it's hard to ask for help. And then two, it's hard to ask for like specific help. Yeah. (laughs) You know, how does that look like? And and what does it feel like for you? I think that comes with, just growing up yeah i'll be honest sure um i think i personally have gone through different friendship groups throughout my life today yeah. and i am the type of person that people say to me my god you know so many people you know blah blah and yes i do but the ones that i really rock with yeah a few and far between yeah so and i think we go through certain experiences throughout our life and, 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 you know, whether you like it or not, people start falling off, you yeah. know, yeah. that's been the case for me in people's lives and where, you know, I'm not kind of, I don't fit into what they mm-hmm. think a friend should be or blah, 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 you know, it's vice versa. Yeah. And sometimes you can take it personally, but sometimes that is just life. You know, someone that you had a connection with as a friend for years and then all of a sudden you find yourself not having things in common. That's okay. Sure. And then you get to a point where the ones that are around you, you're able to just 
when you're able to to have a conversation and not be fearful, that's when you kind of know, okay, there's something here. Yeah. And so that's a, that's a great way to describe it. Yeah. Beautiful way to describe it. Yeah. It's it's something that I I've kind of you know experienced myself, and you know I always think, okay, am I scared or am I frightened to tell this friend how I'm feeling? If mm-hmm. so, then there's an issue here. Yeah. But if I have the capability and the capacity to be able to have a conversation and be like, hey, this is what's going on in my life. I'm not okay. I don't expect you to have the answers, but can I just share it with you? Yeah. And they receive that, then you've got yourself mm-hmm. a nice little team. Yeah. And I think where things have happened, you know, so many things are happening in different people's lives, friendship wise, where, you know, some are married, some are having kids, some are breaking up, some are getting divorced, some are just literally living their best lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's everyone's different. Mm-hmm. But when you can all come together collectively and be like, listen, I'm not good. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. it's shit and blah, blah, blah. And that's when you know they've got you and you've got them yeah and the real difficulty i think as a friend is you know i'm the type of person relationship friendship job anything like that i will give 155 percent any single time just i want to be the best that i can be yeah i want to be the best friend i want to i want to be there for my friend i'll go over and beyond to just bring a smile to someone's face if i can and you know in hindsight that's not always the best case because some people just want you to listen. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. you can't fix everything. Yep. I'm a bit of a control freak where I'm like, right, so this is a shit problem. Let me try and fix it for Same. you. Same. But it's not, it's, they're not asking you to fix it. Some yeah. people, when they're expressing how they're feeling, it's more so they just need someone to just listen. Yeah, they're working through it. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I think you'll be able to figure out, you know, your support system by... I think a just being the most vulnerable you can be, mm. and that's really hard for an individual. Yep. That's not easy because it's very easy to listen to, you know, self help videos and all that stuff. Where it's like, just be your vulnerable self, and mm. it's just like, well, you be your vulnerable. Self. It's <laughs> yeah, not yeah, easy yeah. to be. Well, and yeah, and like, and what does it look like, you yeah. know, on a daily basis, and how do you show up, you know, yeah. to try to be vulnerable, and then who can I show up with, right? Yeah, you know, using your discernment to be vulnerable with. Um, yeah, I, the reason why I bring up the support system is because as much as we can talk about the ups and downs of life, um, we don't have to do it alone. No. You know, and we shouldn't have to do it alone at least. And I know it's hard for people who are listening or watching this and maybe don't have the right support system, right? And that's at least you have us here today with you and yeah. you know, a whole catalog of episodes. Um, so, you know, you can feel like you're not completely alone. But the support system is important, but it's how you help your support system help you, I think is just, um, it's a huge thing. And that's why, you know, it's like self-awareness for sure. Yeah. Being vulnerable for sure. Um, and I think also humility has to be in mm. there as well, right? I mean, being able to take like, you know what, Lee? You're kind of being an asshole these last yeah. couple of weeks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or you know what, Justin? You, you've been a dick. dick yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like, damn, like, have I really? Yeah. And, and how and why? You know, because I want to get better. And yeah. it's really important to have that humility. And it's really important to have those friends as well because I think the friends that I have in my life now, when I am being kind of, you know, a dickhead yeah. or obnoxious or anything like that, yeah. they're the first people to pull you up on it. Mm-hmm. And if I haven't been there as a friend, I've had people, I've had my best mate say to me, yo, like, where the hell have you been? Because I'm going through this and you're not around. And yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> life takes over. And I think that's where communication is key because you can be Mm. in different stages of your life in different parts of the world you don't even have to live in the same city as long as you're communicating that is the main thing to be able to pick up the phone or you know we have everything on like a tablet (laughs) just literally right here to be able to communicate so there is no excuse and i think Mm -hmm. it's also essential for people that are listening and watching to 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 know that social media is a social media is a blessing and a curse yeah and it's one of those things where you look at social media and you click on people's profiles and stories and you're like, they've got so many friends, they've got the best lives and blah, yeah. blah, blah. A lot of people say that about me and I'm like, if only you knew because half the time <laughs> I'm true. in my house in London crying or whatever. Do you know what yeah, I mean? It's just yeah, me yeah, and my yeah. dog. Yeah. And In your beautiful home, by the way. Thank you very not, much. <laughs> I'm not going to let that whole day go viral and talk about your house. Which well, we have like, a thing about interior design. Oh my we? God. Your house is absolutely beautiful but sorry go ahead thank you mate yeah. um yeah and it's it's one of those things where 
don't let that, you know, affect your mental being just by comparing yourself to other people. Yeah. Because, again, just because I'm surrounded by all these people all the time, there is literally a handful of people that I don't even need one hand that yeah. I can rely on in right. my life and, and then speak right. to openly about. And it's okay, even if you have that one person. Yeah. You don't need five less is more. People. Less is more, By and it way, and yeah. it makes things less complicated as exactly. well. Exactly, and there's less opinions and, and cooks in the kitchen, and yeah, less can definitely be more. And also, the people that you least expect. You know, sometimes I've spoken to my mates, and I'm not going to name names, but there's there's people in particular that you know from the exterior you would not expect them yeah. to show up as much as they have for me. Sure, and um, they. People are more open than a lot of people think. Mm -hmm. It's just about actually sitting down and being vulnerable. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I appreciate you sharing that. I appreciate you sharing everything today, uh, your vulnerability for sure. You. Um, you know, one of the main things I try to do on this show is to normalize vulnerability and especially mm -hmm. for men. So it was important for me to have you on. And um, again, I just appreciate your honesty. You know, like you said, in, in one of the things you put in the outline, uh, you know, this whole judge a book by its cover. Yeah. And I just love what you're the moment that you're in right now, the season that you're in right now, which is navigating through it all. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I could tell you're processing as as you go, which is just a beautiful space to be in. In the long run, you'll look back and be like, oh, shit, like this was hard and good and hard yeah. and good. But it made me now who I am. But I just appreciate you being honest about that, you know, because a lot of people, like you said, could look at you or look at your social media and be like, oh, Lee has no problems, no worries. Everything is great. Um, in reality, like you said, sometimes it's not. No. And it's okay that it's not, yeah. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay that it's not. Man, we, we could go on and on and on. Hours. Really. And, <laughs> and I just, um, it's, it's so rare for me to sit down with someone that I can relate to on so many levels yeah. as a man. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even get into like the whole thing. I, I totally relate to you as far as being a person of color and in, in, in a world of white around me when mm -hmm. I was you know, growing up. But also, um, I really struggled growing up as much as I played sports, but I still struggled with like, I'm not as masculine as like my friends were. Yeah. It's like a whole thing, yeah. right? And it's because I, yeah. yeah, I was raised by women. Yeah. So I had at the time way more feminine energy than I did masculine and I used to hate it because yeah. I'm like, I, I, you know, I need to be more like this and more like that. And as I got older, <clears throat> I realized like, this is who you are, bro. Mm. Yeah. You, it, this is who you are. Like the sooner you can embrace it, the sooner you can fall in love with yourself, the, the easier it will be. Like you're making it way, this is me talking to me, you're making it way more harder than it is. Except the fact that you love plants. Like it is what it is. <laughs> I love plants. I have a crazy green thumb. I have two green thumbs. I love interior design. Yeah. Like if I didn't model and didn't do this, I would be doing that. Yeah. Um, I'm so comfortable around women. And it has nothing to do with the sexual attraction. It's just like their energy is calming to me. Mm. It is soothing to me in like this beautiful organic way i could be in a room with a hundred women and be completely okay mm. if i was in a room with a hundred men i would be out of my skin uncomfortable yeah, yeah. and it, it's okay right mm. so it's just trying to find this balance so i say all this because i can relate to you on so many different levels and just the fact that you and i are sitting here being open being honest being vulnerable and having an open dialogue conversation is rare and i yeah. really hope people take away from like if there's guys watching this, great. And if you need to have these dialogues within yourself or your relationship or your friendships, amazing. If anyone listening or watching knows someone <clears throat> that can really benefit from this show and this, yeah. this particular episode, amazing. Like share it with them um, because this will definitely help out a yeah. lot of people. I think the only thing I'm going to say on that is like no one could do it alone. That's the yep. one thing I've, I've learned. Yep. And for sure, we are all guilty of, of kind of withdrawing ourselves and when we are faced with you know challenges as such mm -hmm. you know I, I can say safely say that I withdraw myself from every situation possible and I become a bit of a hermit and I don't want to see anyone mm -hmm. because I want to fight that battle on my own mm -hmm. and it's not always the best way yeah so I think speak up if mm -hmm. you're going through something and just know that there's there are people out there that care and there are, there are people out there that have got your back you yeah, know like yeah, it's not sure. always you, you know, against the problem yeah, or you against the, you against the world against the world it's not like that at all so yeah um people just need to to kind of 
not be scared of being vulnerable. Yeah. Something that we need to work on every day. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And leading more with love versus mm. fear. Dude, let me tell you something. L- love <laughs> is the one thing that, apart from peace of mind that I play for. Yeah. Apart from peace of mind that I pray for, love is is something that it well, it makes the world go round. It makes yeah, yeah. relationships go round. You wouldn't be able to love if you didn't love what you do. Yep. In terms of this right now, for sure. In terms of my job, I wouldn't be able to if I didn't love what I was doing. I wouldn't be there because you'd be able to tell. Totally. And with people as well, mm-hmm. I can safely say every single person in my life has true value. Mm-hmm. And don't be afraid to tell your friends that you love them because you know life changes at any minute. Yeah. Yeah. And um, love just really kind of. Makes the world go around, doesn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it feels good when you have it, and whether it's with a person or yourself, mm. it feels amazing. Mm. So more power to us, man. Sure. Thank you so much for coming on. Full Appreciate gratitude it. for you. Um, Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course, finally. Finally, after two years. Yeah, <laughs> next time I'll have to do it across the pond. This uh, was like therapy, by the way. <laughs> oh, wow, great. <laughs> I feel like I've had a therapy session. And we're session. on a couch, so <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, we're here. Uh, no, but that means a lot to me. You know, I'm just glad you were able to feel that comfortable. You know, so that's good. Very good. Thank we'll you so much for again. having me. Of course.